So when we talk about work, we're starting to talk about multiplying vectors together, a force and a displacement. Um, there's two main ways in physics that we have of multiplying vectors. There's the dot product. The other one is called the cross product, which you'll see later, cross product. Um, they're probably better called the scalar product because one gives you a scalar as an answer. And the other is called the vector product because it gives you, as you guessed, a vector as an answer. But both of them are about multiplying vectors, multiplying vectors. And the dot product or scalar product is the one we're going to use whoop, vectors in this class. And it looks like this. It says that vector A dotted with vector B, A dot B, and the cross product actually uses an X. So for the first time maybe in your mathematical life, a dot and an X and two things just right next to each other are not the same. So there's a very deliberate dot here that A dotted with B is a scalar, just a number, and it's the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B, which we sometimes just write as A, B, without the little vector tops. And if the angle between them is phi, this is cosine of the angle between them, cosine of the angle between them. But I think a better way to um, remember a better way to remember this is to think about these same two vectors, cosine of an angle. So imagine that I have a set now of axes. Imagine that I'm going to have axes where I have one that is perpendicular to the B axis, so let's call that X, and then or, or parallel to the B vector, and then one that's perpendicular, um, and we'll call that Y. So if I were to take A then and separate it into components, Notice that the component that is along B, the X component in this coordinate system, AX, is equal to the magnitude A cosine of phi. So really you can think about this as just A cosine phi times B. If you rotate the coordinate system, you can also show for yourself that this is also the same as A B cosine phi. Since those are all num just numbers, scalars, you can write them in any order you want. So it's the vector times the component of the other vector that is along the first vector. Along the first vector. And if you're thinking to yourself, hmm, I wonder if we ever do a product where we have the component that's perpendicular. Yes, we do. That's the cross product. Stay tuned for next quarter. The other thing, too, that I'll mention is that there's a shorthand way of doing a dot product if you have the vectors already in components. So if you have the vectors A such that they're already in an AX I hat way plus A Y J hat way, and B is equal to B X I hat plus B Y J hat, then A dotted with B is equal to, well, think about this for a second, right? We could just FOIL this, you know, first, outer, inner, last, and so we'd have, say, an AX and a BX, and then I dot I. Well, I dot I, the component of one that's in the direction of the other is just where we started, and they only have a magnitude of one. So that's one times one times cosine of zero, which is just one, and we get AX, BX. Right, but that was supposed to be a subscript. But if we did then say like the outers and the inners, right? Then we would have a x i hat and a b y j hat. I hat dot j hat is going to be zero. I hat dotted with j hat is going to be zero because the cosine of the angle between them phi is 90 degrees, right? So it turns out then when we FOIL this, we actually only have two parts that are left, AX, BX, and AY, BY. So if you already have vectors and components, finding the dot product is really easy. And in fact, some people think this is the easiest way to find theta, 
the e, or phi rather the angle between them the easiest way to to find phi is to dot product the two and then divide by the magnitudes and that's actually one way to get phi so if you can practice around with this um you'll be a, an expert in the dot product in no time okay stay tuned <laughs>